welcome back. In this example, we're going to learn how to create a random sample using the population data set. And we're going to learn how to create a 90% confidence interval for the population mean. I'll show you the different functions you can use in Excel. And I've organized all the information needed in this column right here. And we will fill all the columns that you see right here. This is fictitious data, but let us assume that this was research done. Um, by a group of researchers who were observing the chance of rain in the last 200 days. So they recorded that in the second column here. So on day one, the likelihood of rain as opposed to sunshine was 0.74. Now, as I mentioned, this data set contains data for the last 200 days. We're going to extract only 15 days of information, and it's going to be a random sample. So in Excel, we can make use of the random function, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's use R-A-N-D. You don't have to put any value inside the bracket. Just close it as is. Press Enter. Now we're going to drag and drop and fill out the rest of the cells. Next, we're going to sort this. So right under your home tab on the right hand side, we're going to click on sort and filter. Let's select the data set first, smallest to largest. And it's going to give you two options. We're going to select the one that says expand the selection because we want the changes to apply to these first two columns. Another thing I need to point out, sometimes in Excel, like for instance here, we sorted this, but you can clearly see this is not correctly sorted. So what happens is the random function tends to change whenever I press enter. So in order to get around this, what I would suggest is before you do the sorting, copy and paste the random values once more and paste it right there. So what I mean is just select this entire data set of random numbers that you have generated and write in this cell G3. I'm going to right click and under paste special you need to choose the one that says value. So what this does is it removes the formula or the function that you used in the cell. Now if you sort it, it will be fine. So here you can see that it has sorted correctly. Now since we said that we only want 15 values, not 200, you will select the first 15 values from your data set. Notice Excel does tell you the numbers on the lower right corner. So this is my 15 data set. I'm going to paste it right here. And I'm going to paste this. So the data set that I will be using to answer the questions on the right hand side is the one right here. This is my sample from my population data set. You can also hide the rest of the data. Okay. All right, so now let's get started with our calculations. So the first value we need to find is sample size. This is 15. But in Excel, if you were to use a function, you can use the count function. Select the data set. Close bracket, press enter. Now, in order to find sample mean in Excel, you can use the average function. So inside the bracket, you're going to select your values for the proportion data set. Next, you need to find sample standard deviation. So for this, we're going to use the stdev.s function. Again, we're selecting the data set. Closing bracket, press enter. So this is the formula that we will be using to calculate the 90% confidence interval. Here, in order to find confidence level, which is the T multiple in your formula. 
So right here you see your formula has x bar, which is your mean, which you just calculated, plus and minus your t multiple. So that's what we're trying to find in this cell right here. So confidence level, this value here is your t multiple. So in Excel, you can make use of a function and I'll show you what the function is. So here you're going to make use of the t dot inverse dot 2t function. Here the first argument is going to ask you for probability. Here you need to put 1 minus 0.90. If you were looking for a 95% confidence interval, here you would put 1 minus 0.95. If you were looking for an 80% confidence interval, you would put 1 minus 0.80. Second is asking us for degree of freedom. Degree of freedom is sample size minus 1. So here sample size is 15, it's going to be 14. Let me round up my numbers to two decimal places. Next we need to find standard error. The formula to find standard error is standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Sample standard deviation is 0.28 divided by in Excel, we can make use of the square root function, square root of sample size, which is n. Now we have all the missing pieces to put together in our formula. So lower limit here is mean minus your t multiple value, asterisk which stands for multiplication, standard error. And your upper limit is sample mean plus t multiple multiplied by the standard error. So here I'm basically applying the formula that you see right here. So now how do we interpret this 90% confidence interval that we constructed? We can state that we are 90% confident that the proportion of rain will be between 0.36 and 0.62. Does the 90% confidence interval contain the population mean in this case? So our sample mean here is 0.49. This does lie in between our lower limit and upper limit. So here our answer will be yes. So our last question. What proportion of many similarly constructed confidence intervals should contain the true population mean? Here we're going to answer 90% because we were looking for a 90% confidence interval. We can put 0.9. If you had done a 95% confidence interval, you would put 